Hello and welcome to Tea Time. I'm Ginger Nelson and I have two special guests on the set with me, Craig Matthews and Jimmy Cargill, and they are going to talk about canning. That's right. It's that time of the year, isn't it? It certainly is. Now, Jimmy, can you tell us a little bit about what you do first? Well, I'm an agriculture teacher, one of five here in Tiff County. And this summer during this time, uh, the agriculture teachers are in charge of running our local canning plant. As a matter of fact, I just left them a few minutes ago canning squash, green beans, Irish potatoes, corn. And so we uh, take the vegetables that people have and we assist them in, in putting them up uh, to preserve them for later use. Now, Craig, you also work with Tiff County as well? I do. I'm the Career and Technical and Ag Education Director. I work with all their career tech programs and their ag programs at uh, the middle schools and the high schools. So, the canning plant opened when? The, uh, for this, this summer or? Well, I think it, what, what, it opened, what, two years ago? Was it okay, two years this ago? Okay, this is, yes. The new plant? This is our mm -hmm. third year third in year. this new facility. Now, as far as having a canning plant, this county has had a canning plant since the 40s. As a matter of fact, in the old canning plant, we saw uh, a year scratched in the concrete, which was 1941. Yeah. So I don't know if that was when the first canning plant was there, but the canning plant has been uh, part of this county for a long time. And uh, our school superintendent, Mr. Patrick Atwater, is a very progressive thinking uh, fella, and he uh, helped us get this new canning plant. This is our third year in it. We're very proud of it. Now it's located? The canning plant is located on the high school campus. It's on the back side of the campus. If you'll enter off of uh, New River Road and go in the bus entrance, it's on the right as you get toward the back of the campus. You know, I have to say, I have to admit, I knew there was one here in town, but I didn't know where it was. I, I surely didn't know that it was on the high school campus. Right next door. Right, right. next door. <laughs> if, if the, I tell people if they're traveling down New River Road and they come to the high school campus, uh, look for the bus entrance. Uh -huh. And where it says bus entrance is where you turn in, and it will, it will lead you right, right in there to the AgriScience Center. And the canning plant is one part of the AgriScience Center, which consists of uh, um, classrooms, uh, science labs, where we do uh, biotechnology, mm -hmm. and we do biofuels, biodiesel, ethanol, and uh, the biotechnology, which is, is the newest thing that our students are learning and will be a major part of their future, is the biotechnology part. So we call it the AgriScience Center, and we teach with the canning plant, we teach food science. Oh. Well, now the canning plant opens up when? Has it already opened? Well, yes. You said you were there this yes. morning. We, uh, yes. We are now in our s second full week, and we have been open by appointment for about six weeks now. When people might have had something early, they can call uh, for an appointment. We will meet them there, but right now, we're uh, right in the midst of our heavy canning season, and uh, and so we're we're open from eight, and we take produce, our vegetables until one o'clock, and we have to cut it off at one o'clock because if you get there at one and we process your vegetables and put them into cans or jars, you can bring your own jars and uh, use them and it's more economical. But in any case, by the time the food is processed and packed into the cans or jars, and then they're processed, uh, that one o'clock turns into six or seven o'clock for us. Yeah. So we have, to, we have to cut it off at one o'clock. So, uh, but we uh, have plenty of room, and uh, we, at least we have more room than we used to, and it's a very nice facility. Air conditioned? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the canning facility is not air conditioned, but it does have a cool room, like a break room for for people. If they do get too hot, they can go in there and cool down, get them a snack while their their cans are cooking uh -huh. or the jars are cooking. So, uh, but um, 
the design of that building is much different than our old canning plant. It has high ceilings, has exhaust fans, so it's a, it's a lot better. It's, it's not cool, but uh, it's a lot better than it used to be, and it's, it's very uh, uh, workable. I guess that's what I've heard is that it's a lot cooler than what it used to be before. Right. I know that a lot of people would say that they'd get in there and feel like they were going to pass out. Right. There's vents on the sides on the walls near the work tables, and there's exhaust fans up high to draw out the heat, so uh, it's a lot better. So what do you think the biggest um, produce is that's brought in to can or jar? Let's see. Uh, uh, that would be a hard one. Uh, we, we have a lot of green beans. We have a lot of tomatoes. We can process tomatoes whole or we can juice them and put them in cans for you. Uh, peas and butter beans. People bring uh, peas and butter beans in and uh, they can bring their peas and butter beans. Now we have a sheller, and uh, we have a sheller and cleaner if you don't have them shelled already. And then uh, they could put them their, their peas or butter beans on the blanching tray, blanch them, cool them off, put them in their Ziploc bags, and carry them home and be ha back at home without their kitchen being dirty up. up. Yeah, and, and before they can even get their blanching water hot on the stove. And if you never... Now would they bring their own Ziploc bags? Right, mm -hmm. right. And and uh, we, uh, the cost, the charge if you bring your own uh, peas and butter beans for blanching is only a dollar a tray. You could put two bushels in one tray. Are you serious? Yeah, it's, it, it's, just, it's just a little bit of it's a lot easier than doing yeah. it at now, home Now, see, I have to admit, I've never canned tree. anything, but I do put up peas and butter beans. Um, but I did not realize that because I always thought the canning plant that it was, you know, for canning we'll until I was canning. talking we, to yeah. you earlier. Yeah, we have a large work area for people that just want to put up their own uh, uh, vegetables in, in bags or and to freeze. We have a, a large walk-in cooler where when you get your... Uh, your peas blanched and put them up in bags you can put them in that cooler it'll cool them down fast and and uh, that way you can come back later and pick them up and take I'm them thinking home about what all I do my process at yeah, home yeah. of all I, I do and how long it takes me just to put up I mean because you can't put up a whole bushel at home in at, at you know one pot I mean right. you have to pour just a little bit of that bushel right. in that pot blanch it, cool, it. Cools your blanching uh, water down. yes yeah. and put the ice around I mean but but ginger <laughs> if you will come if you will come and bring your produce we have five student volunteers and each one of these young men know exactly what to do you know a lot of people say well I don't uh, know what to do if I went to the canning plant. That's our responsibility. We, our job is to help you. So let's say that Ginger uh, brings her peas and butter beans or Ginger brings corn or whatever. There will be some young men who will meet you at the unloading dock. They will help you, assist you in bringing your things in. They will assist you in putting them up if you want them to. They will help you reload when you leave. And the good thing about it, they, just, they work on tips, you know. And they, and these, these, so they only work on tips. Right. That's and right. these are high school students? They're high school students. And any one of the five uh, are very knowledgeable in what to do, including there will be three to four of us ag teachers there with you also. So when you come, we will guide you through the experience. And... Uh, I left them just a while ago, and a lady had brought in some corn, and uh, she brought it in late yesterday afternoon. We didn't have time to process it, and so uh, uh, we put it in the cooler overnight, mm -hmm. and uh, they're down there. They should be finished up about right now, but what I'm saying is that cooler that Mr. Matthews mentioned is there that if you buy your produce, let's say you buy shell peas or butter beans, and we don't have time, or you don't have time to do it today. And you say, I'm going to leave these in the cooler, uh, and I will be back tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's why we have it. And uh, so you can bring your corn in and, and process, pr 
process it. Now, a question shuck with it, the corn, you, do you shuck it, it? I mean, you can shuck it there as well. Right. It those, doesn't have to be shucked before you get there. Those students will help you shuck it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a big benefit yeah. there. Uh -huh. I can remember right. several days sitting out shucking corn and how long that took. So yeah. We have a machine that can do it, a uh, uh, process that they can go through, and it, it does it pretty fast. Really? A machine that shucks it? It's, a mm -hmm. it's on a drill. And uh, what's the name of it, Mr. Cargo? I can't remember. The, is that uh, the name of it? I, I forget, but I it, it's one of, these, one of these that uh, is, and it, it's one of these you can buy in a hardware store. Mm -hmm. And we have two of those down there mm -hmm. huh. at the canning plant. You put the cob on the drill and run it through the shucker and the silker, and then it'll cut it off. It'll cut it off whole, whole kernel, or it'll cut it off cream. Cream. And it really creams it up if you like cream corn. But uh, you can also take a little bit of both and mix it together and get the consistency of the cream corn like you like. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, see, I see. I mean, I guess I've always just done this at home. I mean, my mom just kind of taught me how to do most of it at home, which I don't, I'm not a big tomato person, so I don't, I've yeah. never put tomatoes up. And I always, I guess my misconception was the canning place was for tomatoes and corn. Anything. Uh, anything that you want to put in a can. Believe it or not, uh, during the year 2000 when we had all these millennialists who were putting up, <laughs> they came to the old canning plant and said, uh, do you can bullets? Bullets? Bullets. Shells, rifle cartridges. And uh, say, so we'll shell in, uh, can anything you have. We can rifle shells. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah we'll do anything you have. Anything. Now you can't find any. <laughs> no. Anything legal we'll put in a can. And yeah. let me say also, Ginger, that uh, we have people who travel from Florida every year to come up here and can their, really? their vegetables. Last year we had, had people from Alabama, South Carolina, all the surrounding counties come here on a regular basis. And, um, and so just because you live uh, elsewhere uh, doesn't mean that, that you aren't welcome. Anyone, anyone, wherever you're from is welcome to come and uh, use our facility. Well, you know, one thing I know is that a lot of the elderly ladies, they still like to put their stuff up, but they're unable to get into their kitchen and do that. So if, you know, they come to the cannon plant, there is someone there that can help and assist them. That's right. Mr. Cargill mentioned that the students will be there to help them in, in doing some of the smaller jobs, but uh, our ag teachers are all there also, and they handle most running most of the equipment, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, actually running the canning machine that seals the cans, um, running the potato peeler, running the tomato juicer, and running the big retort cookers and cooling those cans and jars down after they come out. All the, the heavy work is what our ag teachers do. As well, so y'all are going to teach me how to do a few things out there, I think. That's right. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> I had to pull my hair up in a ponytail and <laughs> wear my t-shirt and shorts. Right. Where? You can go to one of our many uh, local uh, farmers who sell produce or, or farmers markets that we have here in town and, and get you some produce and uh, bring it out there and, and have it canned or jarred and um, it's, it's really a good way to take advantage of locally grown uh, yes. crops. Yeah, and, and time it's not time consuming at all so you yeah. get it all done in one day. Do you enjoy eating green beans? Oh yeah, love green beans. Okay, I want you to get some and bring them tomorrow we're going to process your beans and uh, carry you through the whole process. Okay. How about that? That sounds good. All that right. sounds good. Okay, so we'll see y'all tomorrow okay. at the canning plant. Good. Now, if someone wants to make, I guess, an appointment for the canning plant, can you give us the phone number? Yes, the best number to call would be Miss Lynn Cook, and her number is 382-2507. And uh, again, 382-2507. And uh, she is, uh, she's our boss, you know, and she coordinates everything and does a great job at it. She's uh, very good. And so just call uh, Miss Cook and uh, she'll answer any question that you might have. And the plan is open throughout the week. Right. Now we will... Uh, we will be working this summer until July the 3rd, uh -huh. okay? 
the 4th of July is on Thursday this year. <clears throat> and so we will work through July the 3rd. Okay, the next week we ag teachers are required by state to attend a meeting. So we will be gone the next week, um, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, and then we will be back. The last day will be July the 11th, which is a Thursday. Now, that doesn't mean, and everything, as you know, is late this year, mm -hmm. uh, the vegetables are. And so if you have vegetables after July the 11th, you may call Miss Cook at that number, 382-2507, and by appointment, we will meet you at the canning plant. Now, later this year, in the fall, we'll have peanuts. Oh. oh yeah, and and we can a lot of peanuts. I bet you do. And uh, we can uh, about, uh, I think someone said that we can thirty three thousand cans last year, and so that's a lot of food. But the peanuts will be this fall, and call and get an appointment. And uh, what we like to do is coordinate a lot of people to come one afternoon, we get them all at one time, and and can peanuts. So uh, we're here to serve you, and we enjoy it. Well, we appreciate you guys being on the set with us today. So we're okay. going to go over there tomorrow, and we're going to put our hair up in a ponytail. Well, I am, anyhow. <laughs> and and um, put some green beans up. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. saying a word it can tell you so much like someone is having a stroke know the sudden signs learn fast f face drooping a arm weakness s speech difficulty t time time to call 911 immediately the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Hi, I'm Kevin Sport, singer, songwriter, and host of the show, The Right Place. Inviting you to be at the Dixie Carter Performing Arts Center on August 17th in Huntington, Tennessee for the Heart Behind the Music Songwriter Showcase featuring Teddy Gentry, Bo Bice, Brian White, and Walt Aldridge. See an up-close performance and hear some of the best songs ever written. Call the Dixie Carter box office today. It's a great show for the entire family. Why do savvy builders, quality remodelers, and serious do-it-yourselfers do business with LMC dealers like Short & Paul? Because quality materials, product knowledge, and buying power matters. We're part of a network of 1,200 independent lumberyard locations nationwide with billions of dollars in buying power that allows us to provide the quality products you expect at the competitive prices you deserve. So on your next project, stop by one of our four locations for products that provide solutions. Put our billion dollar buying power to work for you. Good morning, Ginger. It's good to have you here at the Cannon Plan of Tiff County. What did you bring? What did you bring today? You told me to bring green beans, so I brought green beans. Good, good. We're going to walk you all the way through and putting those green beans up. Okay. And uh, Jasper Pless is going to be your student that helps you today. This is Jasper's third year. He's very knowledgeable about the canning plant here. And uh, you can see we have a lot of people here this morning putting up corn, green beans, squash, Irish potatoes, 
and you're going to put up green beans. Green beans. Good. This is our third year at this facility, and we've been told that it's the nicest one in Georgia. It is nice. Very nice. I'm impressed. I didn't even know this was back here, honestly. Well, the, the people of Tiff County are very fortunate to have this facility, and anyone can use it. Not just uh, city people and not just country people or anyone's group. Everybody can use this canning plant. People As, come from all over to use it. Right, from surrounding counties, even surrounding states sometimes. They hear about it and they come. And so uh, we want you to get the word out for all the people out there to come and take advantage of this facility. We'll do that. Let's yeah. start. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. All right, Ginger, this is Jasper Pless, a uh, third-year uh, student worker. He's now in college at AVAC, and he's, he comes back during the summer to help us, and he's very knowledgeable in what to do. Jasper, what are you, what are you doing right now? I'm going to take their beans out of that chocolate crate that came in, and I'm going to put them on these blanching trays. What blanching is, it stings them and kills bacteria off of the produce. Before you snap them? Well, snap them. we can snap them and then blanch them, but yeah. I think it's easier if you blanch them and then oh, okay. snap them in your hands like that. Well, now we're ready to blanch these two trays here. So we'll go right over here. They're going to blanch them first and then we'll snap them. I'm not really sure, but I know it, it's hot enough to kill any bacteria whatsoever. And they'll go on, we'll put them in for three minutes, they'll blink for three minutes, we'll push them out, let them cool for three minutes, and then we'll take them over back to the station and we'll snap them put them in the Well, I just cut these out, so we'll let them cool, and we can go ahead and take these over here. Later. Sorry, snap I bet you have a lot of people coming here doing corn. That cooler right there, it's got some, it's got a uh, hundred and two ears of corn in there now, waiting to be done. Wow. Then all that man's corn and that lady's corn, so that's about 300. I think he had 150, I think she had like 200, I think. Oh my goodness. How, ma how much does most people put up when they put up? They put them in, I put them in Ziploc bags, maybe uh -huh. quart size. Yeah. And they fill them up and then they freeze them. But in the can, cream corn tastes terrible. Really? It is, it is the, Miss Cook tells me it's one of the most disgusting things to eat <laughs> cream corn out of the can. So yeah, a lot of people, right. so a lot of people just, a lot of people just uh, put it in their Ziploc bags. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Are you in the mood for some amazing food? Well, stop by the Smokehouse, home of the best ribs in the South on 82 and Tifton, and try their new barbecue buffet. The barbecue buffet features their signature smoked chicken, pulled pork, and their famous barbecue beans, all cooked over high-quality blackjack oak. The barbecue buffet is offered daily from 1130 to 2 and from 530 to 8. On Friday and Saturday nights, try the buffet featuring Lake Okeechobee fresh catfish. The Smokehouse is home of certified Angus beef, and they're now in their 26th year. Let them cater your next party. Give them a call at 386-0606. Why do savvy builders, quality remodelers, and serious do-it-yourselfers do business with LMC dealers like Short & Paul? Because quality materials, product knowledge, and buying power matters. 
We're part of a network of 1,200 independent lumberyard locations nationwide with billions of dollars in buying power that allows us to provide the quality products you expect at the competitive prices you deserve. So on your next project, stop by one of our four locations for products that provide solutions. Put our billion dollar buying power to work for you. For over 42 years, Moon's Pharmacy has been committed to providing professional, friendly service where our pharmacists welcome your questions, offer you overall lower drug costs and free citywide delivery. While we still believe in good old-fashioned customer service, we also know the importance of staying on the leading edge of pharmacy innovations, such as travel and flu vaccines, custom compounding, and specialty packaging for homebound patients. Choose Moon's Pharmacy. Together, we can make a difference in your health. Get a barrel of fun, yet pretty as a sunset, redhead light wire. Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Sports, singer, songwriter, and host of our show, The Right Place on RFD, inviting you to join me and some of my friends on Saturday, June 29th, in Patterson, Georgia, for the Spirit of Liberty celebration. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come on out and join us. She likes her country and her rockin' kind of When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. This song was created with heartbeats of children in need. Find out how it can help frontline health workers bring hope to millions of children at everybeatmatters.org. 